Hi everyone, this video is the second part of the example of the steel I-beam section uh, modeled in Abacus uh, through Python. So if you watch the first video, you've seen how I modeled this beam in Abacus, and you also have seen how I converted the journal file to obtain my first Python script. So if we go back into the steps from the introduction video, we've done this step, uh, which I didn't do, but you should do it. We've built the model from scratch, we changed it to .py, and now we're going to go into step number four, which is include comments to increase readability. So before we go there, I just want to show you how this works. So I'm going to go into Abacus and create a new model. So this is now empty. And what I'm going to do is go on file and now go on run script. And if I find that Python script that I just created, so I'm going to go on desktop, test Python, and then the model.py, I'm going to delete this trashy one, and I press OK. What you're going to see is that all your beams, all your loads, all your boundary conditions, everything gets created immediately. Okay? And that's the power of using Python. Okay? If you go on to load, uh, here's the load, here's the boundary condition. So everything is exactly as we modeled, but this particular time, I did it in one second. Right? Because I just had to run the Python script. Now, we're not going to use Abacus that much. Let's go on to my Python script. And I'm going to get rid of this trash one. I'm actually going to delete it as well. So basically from this, what I hope you understood is do not run your model before you create your Python script. Otherwise, it comes with a lot of garbage that then you need to filter. So let's now explore this model.py. And what I want you guys to do now is to include comments to increase readability. So this is a mess of Python code. And even if you don't know Python, which is fine, you don't need to know Python for, for this, you will see that you can guess what the things do just by looking at what, the, what are the names of the function. So for example, if I start looking into line 18, it says here that I started creating a sketch. And then I started creating in the sketch something that involves lines with a point zero zero to point one hundred zero. So if you watch the previous video and if you've done it uh, at the same time, you can start recognizing what this does. So that was from zero to a hundred. That's from zero to minus a hundred. Then it was from zero to two hundred and nine. So two hundred and nine ninety, and then from zero to two hundred and nine to minus two hundred and nine. So what you can see all the way down here until we get to this delete section and then we go into the materials, is this created the section of my beam. So what you should write here is this code creates the section through, I would say, a sketch. Okay, something very simple that then can help you figure out what the code does. And that's basically it, this does it. And you can see as well the extrusion should be somewhere. As you can see here, depths of 6,000. And this line of code says base shell extrude. Okay, so there's nothing particularly difficult about introducing Python to your Abacus skills. If you already know a little bit of Abacus, you're going to go through this uh, very quickly. But okay, so this creates uh, the section through the sketch. Fine. Now let's go and continue reading the code. Here, as you guys can see, this part is about the material. So I'm going to separate this. And if you guys remember, so this creates the material. And if you guys remember, I created the material, I put the Young's modulus and the yield stress, but then I deleted it, okay? But then I created it again. So this is the example that I want you to see that if you make mistakes while creating your Abacus model, Python is going to catch on those mistakes and then your code is not going to be as efficient. So what, have, what am I going to do here is I'm going to delete all of this because I don't want to create a material, delete it, and then create it again. I just want to create it once. Now, is this a big deal? It's not, because Abacus, as you saw, this ran very fast. But why have this unnecessary step in your code? Well, you can just get rid of it, and your code will run, you know, 0.1 seconds fast. Okay, so this creates the material. Done. Now, if you go into the next one, is the homogeneous shell section. And here you can see the thickness of 18, 19, and 20. So here we can see this creates the sections, if you want the three sections, with different thicknesses. And now the next part, we can read it again, section assignment. So this, what this does, 
is this assigns the sections to each plate. And here it would be important for you to maybe keep track on what was the first one, the second one, and the third. So you can say, um, this was done in the following order. Top flange, web, and bottom flange. This can be important for our next step. So top flange, web flange, and bottom flange. So this is my section assignments, and I'm going to continue. And here, what did we do here? So here we created the assembly. So it's did uh, this starts the assembly. This is where we got part one into the assembly. And here we created the step. This creates the step. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, exactly. Non-linear geometry on, exactly what I've done. Then what I had to do here was to create to create a point at mid-span. The instance had to be made independent. And that's exactly what this part does, made it independent. And then the next part partitions the top flange. So this partitions the top flange at mid-span for load application. And now you can see the next one is the concentrated force. So this applies the loads. Fantastic. Then the next step is, what is this? Uh, displacement BC. So this is the boundary conditions. This is the boundary conditions. This is another boundary condition. So this is exactly what we've done. So U1, U2, U3, and then everything free. And then this one, U1 and U2. So it's looking good. Now this does the mesh. So this meshes the assembly and here we can see the size was 300 so there's something here that maybe we can improve let's look into this with a little bit of time so we started by see the part instance with a size of 300 then we generated the mesh then we deleted the mesh and then we seeded the part instance with a size of 30 and then we generated the mesh so clearly we can get rid of all of this because there's no point in creating the mesh with 300 uh, generate it, then delete it, and then generate the correct one. So I'm going to delete this piece of code, and this should be the most efficient one. Mesh size of 30. And then finally, this creates the job. So this video basically shows you how you can look into the Python script and include some comments, so then you actually start understanding what this does. Because once you do this once or twice, you start understanding that the code is actually very readable on its own. So um, I highly recommend you do this. Now. Let me check how long is this video. So it should be around six or seven minutes. So I think there's time to substitute the numbers with the input parameter. So let's go through step five straight away. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the drawing that I've made. And I know my top flange, for example, is 180. And if you remember correctly, we've done the top flange from the middle to the side. So it was actually with, with 90. So if I go into my Python, and I start looking for, I'm going to do control F and look for the number 90.0. These numbers here, 90 and that minus 90, so I don't know if you can see them, so I'm going to flip them. That's the information from my top flange. So what Python will allow me to do is to come here and say, okay, I want my top flange uh, width, let's say, to be 180.0. Millimeters. I'm just going to put a comment so I remember it's millimeters. And I know that the 90, so this 90 here, is nothing more than the top flange width divided by 2.0. So I'm just going to substitute this 90 by top flange width divided by 2.0. Then once here, and then it here. And save, and off we go. Now, what's the advantage? Is now, if I go on to my abacus, I'm going to start a new model, so this is not messy. New model, here we go. I don't want to save. If I go now and I make this, let's say, 1,800, so a gigantic top flange, and I save, I can now go and file run scripts, run my model, and you will see the same model was created, but now with a gigantic top flange. Okay? So that's it. Once you do this many, many times, you have a fully parametrized model that then you can use as many times as you want. So let's get it, let's get this cracked. So top flange width 180. So I now know the bottom flange width was 200. 
So bottom flange width was 200. So now I can look for 100.0 and be a bit careful because this could be uh, a bit tricky. So this is it, two times to create the sketch. So that's exactly what I want. Replace this with bottom flange width divided by 2.0 and this minus bottom flange width divided by 2.0. Fantastic. What else? We have the web height and we've done something tricky with the web height, which was to calculate the depth in a different way. So let's first create the variable web height, not weight, height. And this was 190, but that's not what I put in the model, right? I needed to calculate, let's call this a model height. And model height is nothing more than taking the web height and then add the two thicknesses. So I'm going to first put here the variables for the thicknesses. So I'm just going to copy all this. And this will be top flange thickness, bottom flange thickness, and then web thickness. So one thing that you are noticing is I use underscores for my variables. I highly recommend you do this in Python. Well, you actually have to do this in Python, otherwise everything crashes. Another thing that is important is to put your numbers always with 0, .0 because this is an older version of Python and um, it might create problems if you don't. So I'm just going to go into my drawing again and I say the top was 18, bottom was 20, and the web was 19. So it's basically just removing a 0 and off we go. So now my model height is the height of the web plus the top flange thickness divided by 2.0 plus the bottom flange thickness oop, here we go divided by 2.0 and hopefully this gives you that 209 that we calculate. So if I now search for the 209.0 and I find it in some locations, which is fair enough, I'm going to replace this with the model height. So here it is. Here it is. Another one. And then another one. Okay, one more. Here we go. So no more 209s, which means I substituted everything. And now the last thing I need to do is the thicknesses. So I know that the top one is the 18. Let's confirm this with the comment that I've made. So if I look for 18.0, here it is. So just to confirm, this creates the three sections, 18, 19, and 20. And this was done in the following order, top, web, and bottom. So I need to be careful. So the 18 is the top flange thickness. The 20 is the bottom, so this is fine, bot flange thickness. And then this is the web thickness. And that's it. So let's just confirm there's no others. 18s, just that one. 19s, nothing. And then 20s, also nothing. Okay, so this is looking good. What else we have in our model that we could make a parameter? Another thing we could do is the, the length or the span of the, the beam. So the span in this case was 6,000. So I'm going to call it here and then locate that 6,000 and replace it with span. Okay, perfect. Then I had the materials. We could change the materials. Let's say, for example, the yield, yield strength. Strength. We use 355. Let's say we want to change this in the future so we can make it a parameter as well. And then locate it here. Here we go. And I think that's kind of it. Trying to figure out what else we could change. Maybe we can change the load from minus 1000 to something parametric. And then also the mesh size. So I'm just going to go here and create a variable called mesh size. And I'm going to create here a variable called uh, maybe concentrated force. No, let's just call it minus load. And I need to remember that the load needs to be positive so it goes down because the minus is there. So mesh size and load. I'm going to go back up and say my mesh size is 30 and my load is 1000. And that's it. So now with all of this, I can create a new model 
that will look completely different. So let's say maybe a span instead of six will be nine. The web thickness I can change from nine to and then maybe 81. This is a silly model, but doesn't matter. Now I'm going to change the web height to something very long. So let's say 1900, and then the widths can stay like this. The yield strength, let's say it to 455, mesh size to 40, and then the load to my to 5000. So with all of this, you save, you go into your model. I'm going to teach you another trick as well, which is if I go here to one of my other files, this piece of code here, MDB open and close bracket, basically what this does, it creates a new model. Let's actually put it after the variables, put it here. So what basically this means is you don't have to do this on Abacus, create a new model. That piece of code does that for you. So let's save, go on Abacus, run script, and then see our crazy model. Okay, looking good. Super long web. The loads, how much is the load now? We can open it and see it's minus 5,000. Mesh size, let's go into mesh and confirm that it's 40. Fantastic. Uh, the web, it's all done. So let's just check the, check the se sections again. Section one, it's 81. And we can see where is this assigned? So here's assigned sections. No, section assignments. If we see section one, that's the top. So is that what we want? 81 to the top. 81 to the top, looking good. Now the bottom should have with two. So section two is assigned to the web. So if I look at section two, that's a nine. So is nine for the web. Perfect. And then should be the last one. Section three is two and it's assigned to the bottom. Okay, so this is looking fantastic. I'm ready to start running this model. So I'm going to stop this here uh, because I don't want the video to go uh, too long. There's still a little bit of work to do here so we can start um, calling models one after the other. So let's just look into the steps before we finish. We substituted the relevant numbers with input parameters. That's done. And then we did a bit of testing. Maybe we need to do a bit more testing, but we can do that um, in the next video. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.